Hello everybody, this is Budridge and in this video, Thunar Better IPC, we will be stomping a bit of water, but I, I, I really feel I need to make this uh, adjustments to the Thunar IPC scripts uh, or Thunar IPC script we created in the last video in the Thunar series. Uh, but after I released that video, I discovered, you know, super excited about my uh, floating mode uh, thing to, to add a global rule without the glitch and stuff. <clears throat> and that was also a, a Python IPC, i3 IPC Python script. And in this script, I use techniques here. Uh, even if it's only two lines, basically, this whole thing, both of... of of the ways I do things here is so much better than we are currently doing in our Thunar IPC and that I do in my personal uh, Python IPC script that I really feel I, I need to include this in, in our Thunar IPC as well. Not, not this floating enable, but the way we're managing Windows here, for example, new event here and stuff. We will look into this. We'll start by copying this now. I hope uh, that that you will find this uh, video interesting. Anyways, even if we we will not really make any pr uh, progress in in our in the functionality of the Thunar Rise, so to speak. But I really feel I, I want to make this video. I also want to mention. Don't remember if I did so in the last video, but there is this uh, Thunar IPC start dot sh script. It looks like this uh, when you open it, uh, and it's available on GitHub. This is the directory on GitHub, uh, and this uh, Thunar IPC start dot sh <coughs> that is uh, the recommended way to start this uh, Python script because it will first uh, look for uh, the, the process that are uh, handling that uh, uh, Python script and kill it if it already exists and then start it again, meaning it will restart restart the script. If, if it isn't running, it will just uh, start it normally. And by default here, it starts it in the background with uh, no output. So this means that uh, if we open the IPC script here. Now it isn't active. We can see that this is my Thunar D container here and it doesn't change uh, the, the title format like it uh, does in, in, in the script. If I execute this Thunar IPC start here, now it is running, but we don't get it. It, it, it just starts the script in the background. And now we can see it changes the title format. So now the script is active. And if I would change the script here, just uh, make some stupid thing here, you know, reload it. And then now I can just reload it with this command. There, the, this is the PID of, of, of the script. <clears throat> now you can see it says stupid here at the end of the title format because we just added that change. So I recommend uh, this. This is one way to add this uh, Thunar RPC start dot sh that command add that to uh, wherever i have it when i reload i3 then it also reloads uh, the ipc scripts so you can add it there it's also recommended to have it in your xinit or whatever but there is another thing you can do with this uh, comment this line out i have described it here in the comments in in the script and uncomment this last line instead now it will also reload the script but it will keep it running here in this terminal <coughs> where you started it from. So uh, that means, and this, you should not have this in Xenit uh, RC, for example, because then Xenit will stop at that, that moment. But this is good when you're uh, uh, experimenting with the script and stuff, because now if we change title here, now we get some output here from this uh, IPC script. Now we'll see, I haven't really prepared this, but let's let's do this. <coughs> if I am not um, mistaken, print window notify method like this. And now I press control C here in the terminal to, to stop the script and then I can execute it again. Now let's see what happens. Now you see it prints here window notify method. 
I, I added this print statement that is like uh, echo in in but in Python, and it will echo this window notify. As you can see, uh, whenever I change uh, window, uh, all window events triggers this. If I change uh, uh, change uh, title or change tab here, that also triggers because now the title change and stuff, you know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's keep it like this. So it will print the window notify method. Uh, oops, and then we can copy this to here. Uh, oops, let's do that. Window is thunar. You, you, this will become clear. I, I really think this, this is good to add these prints here to, to really show why, why our old method here was stupid. Window notify method, window notify method. Activate Thunar with D. Now it says also window is Thunar. And really this is, yeah, yeah, you get, you, you, you will see. And maybe even also here, let's add this instead to here. Window is Thunar in the, uh, 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 here we can add. I think you see what, where this is going now. Maybe event is title change. <clears throat> Reload the script. Window notify method. Window notify method. Window is thunar. It says here. And then if I change directory, window is title event and then we get this success true that is from this so now we can see oh and every time it prints this test this uh, print statement it does some kind of if uh, test here and and if it's not just completely free you know it's a test it's a comparison uh, a string comparison it have to do in in some kind of way and also this is this is bloated <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I have to admit that and I that's why I want to make this video how we can improve this by using um, the techniques I used in this set floating thing. Uh, one thing is changing this window notify event to only trigger on or method to only trigger on title change event just as I had had with the set floating which only triggers on new window events. We can uh, specify that here and instead of new we write title can save this the script will probably work now with this change but we should get a lot less uh, window notify events here because now we only focus windows and that doesn't trigger that it's only when the title changes but the title changes for example here on, on in their window notify method because now the title changed and then it triggers triggers the window notify don't know why I had that page open. I'm stalking people on on GitHub. Um, okay, already much more efficient. Um, then also, of course, uh, window is thunar. That doesn't trigger here. Uh, on, on, only on title change but it should here and now we, we can see window is thunar event is title change we really don't need to, to test this now if the event is title change because we already know that it's only triggered on title change we can remove this test here uh, like this same reload now changing title now we only get these and now it's it, it, it's much better this way i think i think uh, you, you see it here now and it became clear with these prints um there is yet another uh good technique here that we should use and that is this uh, instead because now you see we get this success true here and that this you know that that is the output of this uh, command the shell command that we use with this uh, sub process library that we import and stuff here we could get away with all of this because this is built into this uh, i3 ipc python library already we can send uh, i3 message commands 
using using the IPC. It's it's built into it, so we don't need we don't need the, this sub process library. We don't need to execute this shell command. But I will just comment them out because in later videos, future videos, probably the next one already, we will uh, execute a different command. But normal i3 message commands should never uh, have to be used in, in the uh, Python i3 IPC uh, script here. Instead, we can use this. And this does exactly the same thing as this sending uh, uh, an i3 message to uh, the container that invoked the in event. And the event we pass that here, you know. Here, title changes, execute window notify, and then it have the event here, which is an object, and that object contains another object, the container, and that container have all the information we need, the window, the class, and it even have a title format and stuff that we can change now with, with a command here. So, the command we want to send is, of course, title format, and then new title so now we have disabled sub process we don't use that library we don't send any shell commands we instead we use this we can reload here and it's it's really hard to see uh, what kind of um, uh, uh, um, how, 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 how this makes it more uh, efficient you can also see we got this window notify method that triggered when we change title. If we change title in Sublime, it should also trigger that. But that's that's okay at least for now. Um, and now if I change title in in Thunar, window is Thunar, and we get new title as our title format. It uses this. We don't get that su success true output and stuff. Now we only need to add our uh, formatted title. Uh, instead of this uh, hard coded string new title here, and I think I want to do this new TTL here and create a variable with the formatted title. We might, yeah, let, let's do this now. Let, let, let's not, but I actually think we should do this in a different way, but we, we do that in future uh, videos instead. And I will use the same method to concatenate the string. Uh, uh, new TTL reload now it works and it's much more efficient uh, less bloated uh, needs much less tests and uh, is triggered in more specific cases so I really wanted to make this video it was annoying me that we were using such a, a stupid way of doing this and, and it's also good uh, place to, to, to make this change because before we start uh, changing this uh, and extending both both this and, and other scripts that we, that we will do and we will probably do this more during this uh, Thunar series go back and forth uh, improve things change things whatever it, it it is what it is I but I we, we make this series now and on how I have set up my Thunar uh, window here uh, or experience or whatever whatever also I should mention that if you want wanted to use for example uh, this uh, global uh, rule thing that I showed you in in the last video do that in the same I don't have more than one uh, Python i3 IPC script and in that script you can add multiple things like for example now we have both this uh, set floating method uh, that occurs on w new windows and we have this uh, Thunar window notify thing occurring on title change. Just add more methods into the same script instead of having multiple uh, I uh, IPC scripts running at the same time. That, uh, that is also bloated then you need uh, yeah it's not that difficult to, to, to understand why it is like that so just to show you and of course then you can uh, try out other uh, IPC Python examples here uh, and just yeah, more or less copy paste them into to the same IPC script if you really wanted that whatever that's a bit of topic but really wanted to make this video and I think uh, we improved our script uh, a lot by just uh, adding these uh, easy easy fixes 
So we'll see where we take it in the next uh, video. I actually think that we will enable this sub process again and execute a, a command, but that command will not be i3 message. Instead, we uh, execute a new shell script that will, uh, yeah, we, we'll see, we'll see. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Dong and a bolt.